The biggest mistake that Airbnb hosts make is underestimating how much work it's going to take to run an Airbnb business. And so the rest of this video, I'm gonna show you how Airbnb hosts make this mistake and how to avoid it. There are three tips that I'm gonna share, so let's get started. You are going to spend an inordinate amount of time perfecting your very first listing. And I'm here to tell you that is time wasted. You will spend time worrying about, is your furniture and your decor okay? Did you buy all of the right supplies? Is your home perfect? And here's the thing, no matter how many YouTube videos you watch, how many lists of items to buy that you get, you are going to forget something. In every single one of my listings, I have four. I'm working on a number of more listings now. In my up and running listings, I have forgotten some supplies in every single one of them. And while by and large, there's a list of items that every home needs, there might be some items that one home needs and not another because of the features of that home. For example, in one of my homes, the walls are really, really thin and you can hear pretty much everything that's going on at the neighbor's house. Now there's nothing that I can do about eliminating that sound, but what I can do is to make it better for guests. So I have earplugs and I also have noise machines in all of the bedrooms. And since I was getting those supplies in bulk anyway, I just went ahead and did that for all of my homes so that guests have that added comfort. So it's just an, a little extra in those homes, but it's a necessity, an absolute necessity in the one home that I'm talking about. So this is just something that I learned about over time Time, even though I knew you could hear the neighbors and I knew it was going to be something that guests complained about, I opted to wait and see what guests said about it to figure out what was the right remedy for it. And I'm kind of glad I did. I mean, I should have just done it in the beginning, but I'm glad I did because I think I was just gonna do earplugs and I didn't think about sound machines to deaden the noise. And that actually worked out perfectly having the combination of both. So there are things that you are gonna miss and you are gonna worry about perfecting your home and it's just, it's it's not feasible. So spend a lot less time worrying about it, but be open-minded and iterate over time. Listen to guest feedback and put in what's missing. So that is the first tip to don't spend a lot of time <laughs> worrying about getting that listing perfect. Okay, the next thing is you should absolutely do this up front, but a lot of hosts don't because they cheap out. They don't wanna pay the ongoing costs, but get a property management software so you are not spending a huge amount of time messaging guests. You can use platforms like Hospitable, Guesty, there are others, and you can set up automated messages that go out to your guests at specific times. You can create templates and those can go out to every single guest at the time that you specify. It is going to save you a huge amount of effort down the road because your guests will be getting information that you need them to get proactively. That way, the time that you do spend communicating with guests it's about any additional questions they have. And frankly, you should keep a running list in your head and the notes app on your phone of what questions guests are asking you time and time again and put those in to your automated messages that are going out to your guests. So here's an example of that. I originally set my check-in instructions to be sent 6 p.m. the night before guests would check in. and what would happen is that not every guest, but a few guests would ask at some point after they had booked and before they, they checked in, when am I gonna get the check-in instructions? I can't find them. So what I put in was in, I think the confirmation message, I say your check-in instructions are gonna arrive at this date and this time. So they know what to expect. And ever since then, I have not gotten one question about when they're gonna get their check-in instructions and where and how to find them. So that's just an example. But having that automated messages, again, proactive, lets your guests know what to expect and it should answer everything that they have upfront and so that you will spend a lot less time communicating to guests. The last tip before I leave automated messages to guests is there are gonna be some additional things that you're gonna wanna communicate proactively, again, to anticipate 
validate any questions that they may have. So let me give you a couple of examples. In the confirmation message, I include about three to four things. I confirm their check-in date and time, the number of guests, and importantly, if they have any pets. I host pets. I have a whole series of videos where I talk about that and I can link them right here for you to watch after this video. But guests don't always remember to indicate that they are bringing their pets when they book my places. And so the purpose of the confirmation message is to say, hey, remember that we are pet friendly. We welcome up to two house trained and friendly dogs per stay. We do have a $50 per stay pet fee please be sure that you have included your pet in your reservation. And I would say about half the time, guests indicate that they have a pet and they will respond to me and saying, yes, I'm bringing my pet and I didn't indicate. So that way I can kind of do it on the back end to make sure that I add that pet fee to their stay. That's one tip in terms of the confirmation message. The next would be in the check-in message, I include the photos of the home, the parking, the front door, and then I confirm the check-in time. When it comes to checking in on guests. I think it is incredibly important to have a message that goes out to them proactively checking in on their stay. Hey, is everything okay? And asking for feedback. This is really important because the only other time that guests are going to be asked for their feedback is in the review. If you have given them an opportunity to feel heard and to share any information, whether that's positive or negative, a lot of times I find they will leave that out of their review, like the negative stuff. If they tell me there is something that they would like, and if it is within my power to give, I'll give it. For example, one guest actually recently this past weekend said she would love to have had some sto food storage containers. Well, I normally have those in all of my listings, but I think the last guest must have walked off with them. And they're just like the, the Ziploc ones. They're not expensive or anything like that, but they were gone. So I went ahead, went to the store and I got those additional items and I dropped them off and I let her know that they were there. And guess what? She gave me a five-star review and thanked me for being so responsive in meeting her needs. And, you know, have, not having that available to her could have been something that would have showed up in her review and instead it showed up as something positive. So that message is super, super important and will save you time and hopefully a little grief. The final thing that I'm gonna share with you, and if this has been helpful, please hit like and subscribe for more content like this. The last thing I'm gonna share with you is that no matter what you do, you have spent a ton of time perfecting your home, you've spent a ton of time making sure that your automated messaging is great. And when you do ad hoc messages to your guests, you're, you're spending time on that. No matter all of that, you can't please everybody. I, I can't quantify it. I'd have to look back at the hundreds of guests that I've hosted, but I would say anywhere between one and 2% is just an unhappy person that no matter what you do, no matter the quality of your space, they are gonna be unhappy with it. They are gonna find something to complain about. They are, they are not going to give you a five-star review across the board. And in the beginning, I, I wouldn't say I took that personally. I, I certainly didn't take it personally, but I would overanalyze their feedback and kind of immediately go to, okay, what can I fix? And it's not to say that I don't do that now. However, I would say that there are just some things that I let go. So for example, a couple of guests have said they don't like the shower curtain in one of my listings. Well, I am not going to redo that bathroom. I'm not gonna put in a completely new shower and, and install a glass door. That's just not how I'm gonna spend my resources. So there's really nothing that I do about that comment. Um, I did adjust it and kind of make it so that the shower curtain doesn't blow in quite as much, but like, I don't fret about it. You know, some of these things you just have to take with a grain of salt, and that is really going to make your life a lot easier as an Airbnb host. And you can fix what you can fix, and then the other stuff. Let it go, let it go because it will drive you crazy and it will make you think like, maybe my places aren't great. You know, maybe I shouldn't be in this business when that's not really, is a little over-exaggerated of a reaction to have to, to negative feedback or a less than five-star review. So take some of it with a grain of salt. Most guests are really great and very, very generous with their reviews. And, and so overall, you're gonna have a great experience with your guests if you have put the effort into making a great experience for them. And that negative feedback can be 
so disheartening. And one thing you can do when you get it and you have the opportunity to provide a public response is use ChatGPT. I will copy and paste what their review said and say, please write a very short and diplomatic reply to this guest review. I look at what they sent me. If it's great, copy, paste. If I need to edit it, great, done. And then that way I'm not putting a lot of time and emotion into a response. And then I just move on. So I hope you found this helpful. If you want to become an Airbnb host, click the link down below for my referral link. You'll get some money back when you host your first guest. And so will I. And I can also give you feedback on your listing. Finally, if you want ideas on how to furnish your Airbnb, check out all the links down below for my favorite items from the kitchen, bathroom, bedrooms, living room, etc., to furnish your Airbnb the most pro way possible. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.